All right, so today we're going to be looking at two mocks. This is going to be related to G2, of course, because the last two videos I put out were talking about the theme, and I've had a lot of really wonderful conversations about those videos, both in the comments of those videos and also over on Discord as well, which I highly recommend checking out. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Onua Master, at least a retake that I had that kind of filled a bit of a challenge for me, uh, which I really quite enjoyed. I'm super happy with it, but also we're going to be taking a look at another model, a mock, a revamp, if you will, of uh, something that honestly <laughs> didn't live up to its name, uh, in my opinion. One of the issues, before we get into that, just super quick, one of the issues I have with G2, along with what I mentioned, and I, I, I want to clarify that I really do like Generation 2 Bionicle. I know that I kind of crap all over it, but... It deserves it in some ways. We have to understand that you can love things while also critiquing the things that you love, right? And enjoy. You, you should, in all honesty. Uh, loyalty can lead you down some pretty toxic paths at the end of the day. With that said, though, there's one thing about Generation 2 Bionicle that kind of stumps me, and it's the sense that it's honestly something that carried over from Generation 1 as well, and it's the humanoid bad guys. Bionicle Generation 1 really didn't give us a humanoid bad guy until 2006, and of course there are some asterisks to put in here, the Rakshi and the Vaki both walked on two legs, but I wouldn't call them humanoid in the sense of their shaping more or less that said generation 2 pretty much all of the enemies are humanoid and of course after uh 2006 bionicle most of the generation 1 uh villains are too so it's not a gripe per se but it's just something interesting that said there were a couple of this is where we start getting into the mocks here there were a couple of um sets that we got from generation 2 that were non-humanoid that just didn't live up to what they could have been their full potential so we'll be taking a look at one of those, a revamp of them as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Onua here first. And I'm really happy with this. He has made a very brief appearance in at least one other video, but it is this version right here. And I'm very happy with it because you'll notice this is not the wide body. That was part of the challenge here. This is what I call the $15 Onua. And it's not to say it costs $15 to make. Surely it doesn't. But at the same time, it's all about making it in line with the other 15 to $20 Bionicle sets, having that narrower torso build. That said, though, it also preserves the hunched neck from Generation 1. How I was able to accomplish that was actually using the torso from the Star Wars CCBS line that doesn't actually have a ball joint in the neck or in the arms for that matter. So it works out really well here and it still looks really strong thanks to the use of these armor pieces on the side of the torso to really bulk up its upper body the torso print there being from a chima set i just removed the metallic printing so it no longer has the gold on it and it looks quite nice that said though um i'm really happy with the design of him and i think he's balanced quite well a lot of the gun metal is focused towards the top of the model while the silver mainly uh, is relegated to the 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 peripherals if you will the feet the lower legs the wrists hands whatever and of course the weapons the weapons are really where this model truly shines though because they are um i'm trying to remember what i called them i think i i don't remember i did post a video on them though uh, of the breakdown of the build it's a very very simple hammer uh but the way that it works is actually really cool because you can take this hammer and literally just pull the hammer bits off of it and now you're left with a pickaxe. And that's so cool because a pickaxes are obviously something we'd seen a lot, not necessarily with earth figures themselves, but in the story at the very least, a lot of Matoran in, in like Imdog and stuff like that would use weapons like this. And so I love the concept, but then where do you put these once they're not being used? Well, one place you can put them is actually over the shoulders themselves. The ball joints up here actually have some sockets attached to them to allow you to actually give it those wide shoulders from its, you know, wider body. And I really, really enjoy that. It's one of the things I love so much about Onua Master is the fact that he comes with four of this weapon because he utilizes it so well as upper armor as well as, well, weapons a hammer and claws of course with that said speaking of claws you can take the pickaxes off of the hands here on both sides 
So let me go ahead and do that very quickly. Trying to do this all while holding the figures is a little bit difficult, but there are some pieces on the back so you can actually store the pickaxe bodies themselves. So let me go ahead, do that very quickly, and then he can actually hold the claws in his hand, or you can store all four claws by utilizing these back uh, connections as well. And then he can actually dual wield pickaxes instead. Or I guess you could leave the claws on the hammers and then he can go empty handed and carry masks or whatever else. So he has a lot going for him, in my opinion. I do actually kind of like the uh, spread of the pickaxes behind him too. There's just something really interesting in that silhouette there, uh, but they can overlap each other thanks to the arc that they create. So it's very nice. And of course you could always flip one, one direction, flip one the other if you need them to be closer to the body as well. And you can move like axles and things around. It's a really solid build and I'm really happy for its design. I will probably do a breakdown build of this if that is something you guys want. So let me know that one in the comments, of course, but suffice to say, it's an exciting little guy. I like him. And I think he leaves, he, he, he lends its, the build lends itself well to Onua as a character, in my opinion, utilizing this armor here in black to sort of give it that like abdominal, you know, design there, make him look a little bit stronger, a little bit more powerful since he is essentially the Toa of strength, if nothing else. That said though, as I hinted, there is another figure here. Oh, actually, before we get into that, just because I wanted to show you this with all of its masks because why wouldn't I, right? You'll note that I did not use any gold on the figure. That is to make this mask really stand out. I think it shines here. Even though I'm not a particular fan of this shade of gold with these masks specifically, it works really well. And I am actually someone who loves the design of this Bakari. A lot of people make fun of it for being too small, which is fair, but I prefer it small. It sort of grounds the character, right? The mask very easily could have been large, could have been chunky, right? But Lego chose to go in the opposite direction, actually making it one of the smallest masks on one of the larger characters, which A, makes the character look even larger than he already is, but it just helps to really make the character feel like, yeah, he's a powerhouse, but that's not his sole purpose, you know? With that said, though, the corrupt mask looks sickly on him. I will say this mask does an excellent job of making any character that wears it evil. Sure, you can imagine that as being a powered up version, although it is, of course, the corrupt version of this mask. But that gold and trans purple is so good and paired with those lime green eyes, there's something about it just looks unwell. The last mask I want to go ahead and test here is actually a resin cast because I don't have the regular one right now, uh, but the regular version of the Onua mask or Uniter mask, both versions really would work well on here also. And so yeah, that's what that looks like. Of course, the silver top would be on the real United version. That is from Socket Ball as well. That's from a few years ago. That said, though, as I mentioned, there are two figures we're going to be taking a look at in this video. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. I just want to kind of set him out of the way for a minute, because the second one is a bit larger in terms of its oh, the, the amount of space it takes up. So one of the sets that I think got a bad rap, rightfully so, is the Skull Scorpio set. It came off of the boot heels of the Skull Spider set, and that had a lot of criticisms as well. And it just felt like LEGO didn't listen to them, in all honesty, when designing this set. Yes, it was cool that they did something different, that it wasn't just another humanoid. It was crawling on six legs, but then the six legs couldn't move. So was it really crawling or was it a display model? Like, what was it? It just felt like it didn't know what it wanted to be. And the fact that it just kind of slapped a body onto it, it could have been done better. So the route that I took was this sort of like corrupt mutated version of the figure. The only exclusive piece in that set, as far as I'm aware also, is the gunmetal claw pieces on him. So that's really unfortunate because many of the other Skull villain sets come with exclusive or near exclusive pieces. With that said though, this looks lovely. In all honesty, I, I'm not positive how I feel about these pieces as horns specifically. I love the tattered effect and how well they go with these armor pieces on the side, which are bootlegs in this silver color. But I like it, all told. It just has this very gangly feel about it that, again, feels like it's been corrupted and been turned into this creature, been grafted into whatever this is. Not that it started that way. Rather, it feels like it started out as once being a humanoid-like 
character, maybe even a good guy at some point, but slowly devolved into this skull villain of some kind. The mask on here is pearl dark gray, but that is just a dye job that I did. It's also not a perfect match because of a chemical reaction that happened. That's for a different video. However, there are dark uh, pearl dark gray versions of this bootleg out there that you can get your hands on. So it's a very good mask. I would recommend it. I don't have the bootleg of it, but I do like this mask in general. That said, it does have a excellent function, very reminiscent of the Skull Scorpio set where there's a little lever on one side and you can swing it forward and then those claws come together. The idea being that the claws are open. They can actually fit any of the G2 masks inside of here. And that momentum of swinging forward keeps the claws open until the very end of its arc where it has no choice but to close around whatever it's grabbing. The range is not the greatest by any means. It's right in front of the face, but you can see it as protecting the face, sure. But it's not so much about the range itself as it is about that function. It's such a good function, in my opinion. And it folds down really nicely to become this sort of like thorax back end of this insectoid-like creature while still being that sort of stinging tail to give this scorpion his name, right? It's a lovely design, in my opinion. I'm really happy with it if you can't tell already. It's not a perfect set by any means. And again, I was trying to co kind of go the route of it being at that $15 to $20 price point. It does contain two torsos, so Lego would probably sell something like this at around the $20 price point, which is unfortunate. But still, it's a really nice build overall, and I'm very happy to have designed it at the very least. That said, of course, it does include the... Um, bear trap piece yep yeah. and the uniter armor both of which came out the wave after this so you could definitely make the um argument that well this isn't exactly what this should be because those pieces didn't exist yet that's fair i don't mind i think it looks quite nice and of course at the end of the day this is just a revamp built sometime in 2023 or maybe even 2022 i don't know when i built this it's been built for a while so yeah, I'm really happy with it. One of the other things that I kind of complain about with the Skull Villains as a theme, I actually do like them and I think they are underrated, even if they can tend to be a bit boring as sets overall. You can see the Skull Warrior back there on my shelf because I quite like the character. Um, but is the fact that A, we never really got enough masks for them, let's be honest, enough weapons from them in general either. But also we never really got a blue a proper blue water skull villain set and that's really annoying to me because it felt like trans dark blue was really neglected in generation 2 bionicle trans yellow for that matter as well for ccbs in general we should have gotten more we got one shell in that color and it's the largest version of shell piece while at the same time just one mask appears in the tra or with the trans yellow in generation two it's a fire protector mask and it's a lovely color so i would have liked to have seen it more specifically with a set like stone pohatu and of course the skull scorpio set as well i think it belongs to stone much better than trans neon green but i get what they were trying to do there are a lot of um sort of fantasy worlds that like to attribute like lightning colors for example to desert characters which i find is fascinating for sure um but the end of the day there's room for improvement and that's true for basically any wave bionicle or otherwise that's pretty much it though for this video so if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does really help out the channel and of course as always you can join the conversation in the comments below or check out the links for discord instagram and patreon if you want to support channel gets perks in the description and i will see you all in the next one take care